Hello and welcome to another jungle video and in this one we should be talking about jungling that lets you control the tempo of the map while being a hunter in your playstyle. This carry guide will show you how to dictate the pace, read the enemy jungler, adapt your game plan and yes kill a lot of enemies to please the LP guards, tilt the enemy laners and make you feel good about yourself for just a small moment in time. But in order to make it work you really have to have a good game sense, understand your limitations and what your champion is good at in order to actually be able to carry games. As such, if you can use this style in your own games in gold, platinum, silver, diamond, what have you, you should be able to see a lot of success with this champion or others like him. And also we will be taking a look at a new type of build as well as rune set that really is used by all the Warwick jungle mains in high elo career, which is very interesting. So if you enjoy the content and want to see more, please consider liking and of course subscribing. Don't forget to head to the Patreon to support the content further. And now without hesitation, let's begin. So as we set up for the first clear, there will be a unique style to this war gameplay, as well as trying to read and react to an early game jungler who likes to gank, as with this Rek'Sai. Now for the phase rush runes, they're pretty much standard if you like the speed jungling, and the secondary really is down to your preference if you want triumph, tenacity, a little bit of alacrity, or maybe even you want to keep some of the domination page, you can choose that as well. And obviously with champions like this, you are looking to do a 3-4 camp clear, ignoring the raptors and krugs. This puts you in position for an early gank, a 1v1, counter jungling, because you really do need that to get ahead. That's the difference between being a wolf-like chimera hunter and, you know, your regular puppy. But don't worry, this guy is going to bring out all the species from the genetic splicing and show you exactly how strong he can be. That being said, you really are looking for a gank after your 3-4 camp clear. Make sure you pay attention to any enemy jungle pressure that happens before you do, just like this Rek'Sai, where she did a simple red side clear into a bottom lane gank. So because we have ranged top laners and, you know, solo lane Lucian is gaining just a little bit of popularity, once you have done that kill, the downside to the Rek'Sai doing that kind of play on the bottom lane is that she will reset and now head to her blue. The problem is while she would perhaps want to fight for that, due to the fact that her top laner is dead, that Clad is still alive, the Warwick can actually battle you 1v1, you will most likely lose your blue side camps, especially the blue buff at the very least, plus the top side crab, and be forced again to go down to the bottom side. So because you do a red side clear into a bottom lane gank, you give up a lot of prior if the enemy jungler has done a reverse clear to you, and now essentially controls three of the four quadrants of the jungle map. But not only that, has phase rush and so can actually tower dive the Lucian because he's already been killed, and you will see the E doing a lot of damage reduction for the Warwick, and the phase rush coming in absolutely huge as he can simply run away from the tower and doesn't even have to burn his flash. Now the Rek'Sai has two choices here, she can either go into the blue side jungle of the Warwick and get those level 4 Grump and Wolves, this will deny heavy XP to the Warwick while giving herself a nice injection of that directly into her uh, fin, but instead knowing that the Clyde has not gone back, he has completely overstayed, the Warwick will 100% reset after losing that much HP, she simply goes across the mid lane behind the pushing wave, through the Herald Pit, circumnavigates the vision by going through Tribush, and they're able to pick up something for the Kled. The problem is the Warwick has gone back to base, will reset and go down to Grumble Wolves for the same reason. So instead of being in position to set up a 3v3, a counter gank, she has simply given the enemy jungler priority on ganking bottom lane, which of course as Warwick you do when they're low HP, a simple Q3E combo to make sure you put yourself between them and their escape route, chase down the target that's running away, give them a nice chomp with your Q to finish them off, Everyone likes a good dose of percentage maximum HP. And now you could look to the dragon if it wasn't warded if the Akali didn't have prior in the mid lane. But also you are quite low and don't know where the Rek'Sai is. So while our good boy eats the blue side camps as a reward for ganking the bottom lane, Rek'Sai will simply be looking to counter jungle the red side camps after discovering that the Grump was also stolen. So if I'm not really a huge fan of the path in your game plan, but you know, she's trying her best. Because she hasn't shown for a while the Orianna wards Raptors just in case there might be a flank gank, they would see one baby nugget remaining after all the wings were eaten by Rek'Sai, and so Warwick knows he can hang on the bot side and repeat gank on the bottom lane. And this is a good general practice to do if you are a more slower clearing jungler, you're not looking to farm, you want map impact early, and you can see that the Warwick is forcing the Rek'Sai to react to his pathing, react to his aggressive moves, he's controlling the map tempo, and the fact that his bottom lane didn't go back after that first gank means they most likely have some sort of gold deficit in terms of itemization. So then it's very easy to help out, gank again, shove the wave, and we will wait for the Orianna to get lane prior and then rotate down for a dive. As you watch that happen, I want to make an important note on his itemization. The astute jungle hunters in the audience would have recognized, hey, wait a second. This guy went Barmy Cinder and Talisman second instead of Tiamat. And yes, that's actually what a lot of jungle mains in Korea do in high elo. 
They're not looking for damage in terms of spells, they're looking to support their lanes, survive and basically be that disruptor for the entire game. As such, they prefer the mobility and kiteability of Phase Rush that lets them move in and out of fights in order to circumnavigate the fact that they don't have an escape once you engage. It also means that in terms of clearing your jungle, that Tiamat really does help. So instead of that, if you're going full tank, an early Barmy Cinder really helps in that phase. So this is a different spin on how you would build Warwick, but if you're in a Clash tournament, a Flex 5v5, and even in solo queue if you're looking to be a more chunky boy, this particular build path will give you a bit more survivability early to make these plays, and as you saw, we will talk about the rest of the build later on, but it does include a Wits End and an Ionian Boot, which means your DPS isn't exactly nothing. So a little bit of a scrap develops as the warrior goes back to base, buys a Cinderhawk and Ionian Boots. And the reason he simply paths upside now is while you don't exactly have the speed without Tiamat to clear the AoE cams, the fact of the matter is you lost core members and your blue buff is probably being stolen. This upsets you and maybe you're a little bit triggered, but the worst thing you can do is check a blind bush while they do that. Instead, it's better to head to the top side. The concept of giving up camps when you know you cannot go there or they might be stealing it is really a big principle you should hold on to. And also when you do these things, when you show restraint, as well as the fact that you lead the charge in terms of counter jungling, ganking, and taking objectives, the enemy jungle also won't be able to track you very easily, and as such will lead to a scenario like you see here. Rex and the bottom lane are clearing up vision, they get shown, but they have no idea where the Warrig is. In the meantime, he's just gone into the jungle, he's placed some wards down, he takes himself the Grump, they see the Lucian, he takes himself the Blue, and the Rex is just waffling around because she can't really commit to the dragon, doesn't know where the enemy jungler is, can't really commit to counter jungling because her bot lane can't sit with her for 10 minutes while she waits to set a trap. The Warwick has all the knowledge, he's directing the flow of the game, and now commits another tower dive onto the Lucian. At this point, it's too late for the Rex side to, you know, exactly counter jungle, so instead she tries to get a gank on the mid lane. This is successful. The problem is shows absolutely no awareness of where the Warwick might be and walks into him in the river. His ult is up again, and at this point with Ionia Boots and Cinder Hulk, he has the Gold Lead, the Atomization Lead, and the Alpha Predator Ego able to actually, you know, defeat her 1v1. And while Cled finishes off the top lane for 5 plates, thank you very much, the Bat Fox Dog does the Rift Herald. And you will also notice that he is, instead of maxing QOW one way or another, has put 3 points into the W for the CDR, attack speed, as well as map movability, and is now going to max Q, because when you build full tank, their percentage HP damage is absolutely crucial to fights, as well as using your lead. Also, the heal's pretty nice. So part of putting the enemy jungler on a piece of string and dragging them around the map, controlling the map tempo, is that you need to be able to elevate the game state when your team is ready for it. In this case, spam ganking top lane gives Cled a huge lead, 5 plates, and a dead tower. You also have the Herald and have counter jungled the blue side of the Rex side. That means there's literally nothing on the top side for you to do, or for the enemy jungler to do, so you know she's going to most likely try and force action on the bottom lane. After buying and putting some components into your wit's end, you can now turbo steamroll down to the bottom lane, and because of course your top laner doesn't have to be there, can now TP to a deep ward and basically do a 4v3. Now obviously this kind of coordination is unique to higher elos, or at least consistently, but I do see it quite a bit even in lower elos once a top lane has taken a tower, they get fidgety and want to make plays. And in this case, even if the cled doesn't TP, it's a 3v3, you have a lead, you can still do this, so you don't need to blame your top laner if things go wrong. And obviously the Lucian's been burning his TP just to get back into lane, so he would have to walk all the way down, you know, just the kind of things that make them hate their role. And us, they hate junglers. So as you can see, this basically turns into a nice good fiesta that Lucian and the Akali both rotate down. The Orianna, you know, note to all mid laners who aren't in Hyelo. Even though the Akali makes the first move because she has the Lucian, the Orianna actually, you know, looks to join the fight. She's not just sitting farming in the mid lane. And, you know, it turns into fiesta. Akali gets two kills. She does get shut down. They're basically able to chase down everyone, including a 7th kill for the Warwick. So that's a good, you know, run around fiesta where you guys try to make a play and everyone is fighting. Everyone should be used to that, right? That happens in all our games. The thing is, I know you kind of want to keep the map control and the tempo going, so you want to ping pong your objectives, Dragon Herald, Dragon Herald. But if your team is low and needs to reset, they've got a lot of gold in pocket, you included, there's really no need to force it and stay out too long. Because, you know, that's, that's how you throw and that's why I made the video on the weekend and you should go watch that. Now when you respawn, you pick up some extra kills, all the skirmishes happen, you start the dragon, you're seeing that all unfold on your screen. Please, when you do begin the dragon, consider if it can be stolen, consider where the enemy jungler is, and sometimes it's best just to pull it out, burst it down, get everything out of the way, and make sure you can smite it. I know some of you might want things to last longer, but that really isn't one of those scenarios. Just take the dragon and leave. But you will note, even though the Rek'Sai falls and she did steal the dragon, don't default back to clearing your own camps. We have to maintain control, maintain tempo if we're looking to take this strong early lead and close the game out. That means you take the crab, you take the blue, you kill the Akali who's gone way too deep. You take your red, you take a herald. It's non-stop. You farm the camps in between during the downtime. But if there's any objective, any counter jungling, any kill to clean up, those take priority over your camps. 
You will not be able to AFK farm and turbo scale like a Karthus, like an Evelyn, so you have to make sure this is how you control everything. This strategy is really good versus an early game jungler because you deny them their win conditions, they will never realize that fantasy, sorry to them. And if it's a late game jungler, you've really stifled their experience gain, given them nothing to really get fed on and basically stolen all their camps. They also weren't able to track you and so didn't have the confidence just to walk into your jungle because if you were there, you would beat them 1v1. And now, even though you don't exactly have your whole team with you, it's okay to use that second Herald for a strong push on the mid lane. First Herald for plates, as you saw, second Herald for a strong push to open up the map even further. Now you can set traps and wards in their jungle, deny experience further and make sure you actually have the waves necessary to close out the game. This means spending your gold and yeah the second item in this particular build is the Righteous Glory. So if you see anyone rage splitting on the top side, basically you know you won the game at this point because you can get your itemization, punish anyone over pushing on the mid lane, catch the bottom side wave and now you've got an opposite map push. It's the last out of tower, but the enemy team has totally given up. So this particular strategy, as you would have seen at the beginning of the game, works with a variety of junglers. But if you'd like to use Volleyball or Warwick, the core items are that Righteous Glory, Wits End, Cinder Hulk, and Ionian Boots. After that, you can basically go Spirit Visage, Dead Man's, you have a GA. It's a unique build. The Phase Rush gives you a lot of that kite ability, you know, in and out like this set, like the Lilia. I'm not sure I directly recommend it over other builds. It's just very interesting that this is how Warwick is played in high elo in Korea because it matches the map pressure, the diving, and other aspects of the jungling that they like so much. In addition to the fact that Warwick can be really used for lockdown target and engage target later in the game with this itemization. Also, if anyone is, you know, overstaying, you can punish them very easily. The E fear into an R and an Akali, for example, is absolutely supreme. And the fact that Warwick is extremely good into things like Evelyn. So if pro players are watching this and actually want to use something interesting versus Evelyn, you know, in that arena, I can highly suggest this pick with even this build path if you wanted to. But really, don't sleep on the Warwick pick versus Evelyn. It's really great. Q through the R plus the lockdown plus the ability to basically press W and C her at any given moment. Yeah, big brain. So there you have it, a unique play style, something very interesting, a different build. Hopefully you enjoyed and learned something. Please don't forget to like, share, and comment if you did. Don't forget to head to the gameplay channel as well as the Twitch channel for more coaching and educational content. And as always, I will see you all in the next tutorial.